In this video we're going to have a look at using the repeater in place of the product listing which is standard for WooCommerce. So here we have a standard shop layout, we have the standard filters for WooCommerce from WooCommerce and we have the standard layout. We scroll down you'll see that below that we have the similar layout but this is all being created using the repeater, slow, a slightly different uh, layout um, but all built with the repeater so to show you how this works what I'm going to do is turn the uh, or before I turn the shop off I just want to show you that when it comes to sorting let's say we just sort by popularity and we see the layout that we have here two sale items to the right on the top row and we scroll down you'll see that we have exactly the same indication of what's on sale in the product listing that is created using the repeater. What we also have then is if I just go back to the default sorting another thing that uh, we might want to have a look at is you know something like a group product. So if we look at logo collection this is a group product and you'll see it indicates that it is on sale and if I scroll down in the same position we also have the logo collection on sale that because one of the items in the product is actually on sale. So we're able to pick up the on sale items. The buy now functionality is slightly different. Um, here we have the add to cart which occurs in place. If I scroll down to the same item and buy now we actually get redirected at the moment to the product page. So that's just one subtle difference. Um, otherwise the functionality is very similar if not the same so what I'm going to do now is turn off the shop and then I'll show you how we've set that up so I'm going to enter a condition here just to make that go away so I'm just going to set the date to a time before today right so we've set the condition and I'm just going to show a wide based on condition and now you'll see that in our shop here we have our repeater which is coming up instead of the shop now I'll just show you now that if we save that and we head over to the front end and we enter and you'll see now that we have our repeater showing in place if I was to do some filtering, so let's say I uh, wanted to have a look at hoodies here on the categories, then you'll see that hoodies are showing. If I then uh, filter further and I say just show me one item on sale, then one item's on sale. So it's pretty clear that in terms of the um, filtering, those kinds of things, that will work as it should, and the repeater displays the products that it should depending on. Um, the filter criteria um, whatever's been set so the repeater definitely works and the way that the repeater is set up in order for that functionality to to take effect is by setting the repeater query to default so we've just set it to default and nothing else. Then we created our individual product listing. And this is on the archive page for the shop. So we're within the WooCommerce ecosystem, just displaying our layout with um, the repeater. So here in the repeater, you'll see that um, we have the div set up and then we have the, um, the image. So the first one that the first um, item I have here is the image. Then we have a div here and that is for the on sale items. So this um, is for the on sale items which is a, a um, absolute item. So it moves around inside that block um, and we can position it exactly where we want. Then we have the heading and below that we have another div and in that bottom div we have uh, the we've used the product builder to display the price and then uh, we have the uh, 
uh, by now, but uh, there's no there's nothing. This code block is not used. So that's how we've set up the um, layer for our um, repeater. And for the sale button to work, uh, we've had to use our own custom function there. So what we do for the sale button to work is we have a condition and that condition says um, if this function is true and the product is on sale, then we display the on sale on sale button. Now the same thing could be done for you know anything that was by age, the latest product. We could also have a button and we'd look up the product um, added date, the date the product is added, and then if it's you know if it's less than two weeks old, we might have a badge that says new product. So that is something that we can do with a condition as well. And to show you the condition that we've used for the on sale item. I'm going to head over here um, to my check if on sale and basically what we do here is we we first uh, get the global variable product and then we check to see what products are on sale so we get the IDs of the product on sale then we get the current product ID now we need to check if the if the product is on sale so to see if it's a group product because remember that in a group product you have children products and if one of them is on sale you want to have the sale button so what we need to do is first check if the uh, first we get some meta values for the product then what we do is we check if the product um, is type of grouped if it is grouped then of course we're going to look for the children then for each child we check to see if it is in the array of uh, the products on sale and if it is we return true alternatively if in array and if the product ID is immediately available in the array of um, products on sale then it returns true so using that function then we're able to determine if the uh, group product as well as the normal products are on sale so I'm going to head back to the website and now I'm just going to show you that it does work as it should. So I'm just going to click on shop here so we can get back to all the products. Right, so there we have all the products. And of course, as you hover, you know, I have a key line that appears around the item that I'm looking at. But you can, of course, style that any way that you want. And then just to then show you again that if I was to arrange prices low to high, you will see then that the arrangement is done. Now to get this bar at the top of the page, what we've done here is in the um, builder, this is actually some code that we take straight from WooCommerce and it's the do action WooCommerce before shop loop. And we just insert that above the loop and it will then automatically display the number of results as well as the uh, the sorting filter that we see there above that we have the description or the category or the store and this is taken using a text element and then we look here for the archive description and the one thing that I haven't added to my list here then at the moment is, a, is the archive title so I'm just going to add that archive title here and so we look here for the archive, archive title and what I'm going to do is just make that font size a little bit smaller and give it a different font weight and then what we'll do is just move that above and put that over there. So. Uh, let's have a look if we save that. So we head over to the front end. And there we have the fact that we are in the archive of products. And if I now click on accessories, I'll now be in the archive or the category accessories. Um, I'm now going to filter that category by blue. But you can see that I'm still in the category accessories filtered by the accessory with blue we'll add the 
filter of red so now everything in red is uh, is visible and we're still in the category accessories so let's return to all the products um, also just to show you that the price filter works so I'm going to go for a very narrow range of items that are uh, let's say no to forty dollars in price and you'll see now that we have the items that are north to forty dollars in price so you can see that the repeater works well you can create your own custom badges to appear based on functions that just return true or false and that's pretty much how you can use the repeater then to replace the WooCommerce product list layer so I hope you enjoyed that video and thank you for watching